Rod Little's with us. Well, how does he, he forgot- nine wonders of the world? He's <laughs> added two. <laughs> Don't know. He forgot. He forgot the name of the island that was on fire. Right. <laughs> well, when he was first oh. asked about it, he didn't. He said no comment. There's people dead. They're going. You know, <laughs> he's hopeless. Just hopeless. I, I, I suspect he's the worst president the US has had. I think so. I think um, so. There, there are a few runners and riders for that. Buchanan wasn't terribly good, I suspect. No. Um, but but he's got to, he's got to be up there. He's got to be up. He's there. just he can't speak. You know, it's ridiculous. And he can't speak, and and um, he's quite malevolent. Oh, he's not he's, a pleasant guy. People paint him as this kind guy. of grandfatherly, you know, old yeah. sort of Democrat, but he really isn't. No, and there's a bit of corruption lurking in there. There as is well, a stench, you know, yeah. With, with, uh, with his charming son, Hunter. Um, it was a story which people didn't report because Twitter and Facebook and all those places closed down any yeah. mention of it. Um, yeah, uh, incredible. It's a disgrace. The reason he is in the White House is because of a concerted campaign by the American media, both the social media countries, the high-tech mm. companies, and indeed the uh, newspapers and uh, TV, uh, to swing the election. Right. It was absolutely naked. It was the sort of thing which I suspect you will see in our country one of these days. Yeah, quite I soon. wouldn't be at all surprised. Not at all. Well, speaking of which, um, your main piece this morning in The Sun is about Mr Mystery. I'm going to now reveal that Mr Mystery <laughs> is indeed... Uh, Sir Keir Starmer, the international man of mystery. Who knows what he believes? And if he believes something, uh, you can be pretty sure he won't believe it tomorrow. No, it's remarkable. Um, He's done it on so, so many issues. The latest one, and the one that I was featuring, was, if you remember, when the Scottish Government brought out its ludicrous gender recognition bill, Uh. which said it was okay for 16-year-old people to identify as whatever they liked without medical without medical uh, diagnosis. Um, he uh, and the government stopped it because it would have had implications for us over this side of the border as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, and Sir Keir uh, <laughs> at first said, uh, the government shouldn't interfere. This is disgraceful. This is absolutely disgraceful. One week later, I think the government is right to have done what it's done and we wouldn't <laughs> change. I mean, you know, then uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, uh, early this week, up in Scotland, I think it was disgraceful that the government interfered. I mean, you, how can you vote for someone? Mm. And I've been thinking about voting for him, you know. How can you vote for, for someone who simply will not tell the truth? And also, I know? just will play against him because, of course, the people well, who voted, hoping. the people in your part of the world and elsewhere who voted to leave the European Union will not believe him when he says, oh, yes, we definitely don't want to rejoin the EU. We definitely don't want to do that. Because they're going to go, well, hang on, everything you've also said that you didn't definitely want to do, you've then reversed on. Yeah, but he's done it on absolutely everything. It's oh. remarkable. He's done it on nationalisation of the utilities. Uh, he's done it on just stop oil protesters, where at one point he said, what wonderful people these all are. How ghastly they are! <laughs> just and, and you you think to yourself, well, look, he's the opposition. The, the opposition's job is really to gain power, mm. but there has to be something in there which you can cling on to and say, the Labour Party under Sir Keir Starmer stands for that. But given his flip flopping, you cannot. There is nothing to hang your coat on. No. You know, there, absolutely nothing you can say that the Labour Party would do that Keir Starmer might not uh, resile mm. to James time. Yeah. I mean, it's remarkable. And also, remarkable. if you ask the question what does Keir Starmer believe in, I literally don't, I can't give you anything. I don't know. No, no, that's right. That's right. But but it's, it's you know, it's, the, it's his problems over not being able to define what a woman is. Yes. And at last, you know, he seemed to have got there. Uh, uh, a few days ago. He did eventually, uh, yeah. Uh, But, you know, as I say in this piece, uh, for Sir Keir Starmer, the road to Damascus has more roundabouts and slip roads than Spaghetti Junction. (laughs) You know, it's just... Well, I mean, in keeping with the current state of our infrastructure in this country, if there were a road to Damascus, you wouldn't be able to get there because it would be closed. It would be coned (laughs) off. You know, be charged twelve pounds fifty. The code off, and I'm afraid there's a bit of a ULES going on, and you might get a speeding ticket on your way to the <laughs> Damasi uh, conversion. Brilliant. Yes, um, which brings us, I suppose, to Graham Linehan and uh, his yeah. upcoming uh, possible libel—not uh, libel, but just damages case against the Edinburgh Fringe. 
Yes, I, I so fervently hope he wins. This yes. is a, a gig put on by Andrew Doyle is a very good thing. Yeah. Um, uh, especially when he writes as Titania McGrath, uh, which, which is just hilarious. Yeah. There are still people out there who think Titania McGrath is a, <laughs> is a real person and they agree with her. Yeah. It's just fabulous. Uh, and uh, this this loathsome uh, venue, uh, the Arches in Leith, the Leith Arches, yeah. uh, banned him because of his views on transgenderism. Um, uh, Joanne Cherry also, of course, was was initially banned yes. from the venue and looked into the legal implications, and there are legal implications. You don't discriminate against people for that reason. Well, I mean, ludicrously, in their explanation of how they banned him, they said they wanted to be more inclusive. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> it's going to go, sorry, that doesn't quite play. I've, I've got a little plan, uh, which was suggested to me by a friend, which is I might try and get a mate of mine, Roy Chubby Brown, up to the fringe yes. next year. Yes, uh, See what happens then. It's a very good uh, idea. Uh, because, you know, uh, Roy has been banned. Roy, Roy was banned from his own hometown of Middlesbrough because the Labour Council said it didn't sit easily with their values. Huh. Uh, and uh, it's the same council. They haven't the got same. any values, these people. They talk about values as if it means something. It means absolutely nothing. It means absolutely nothing. No, no, it means absolutely nothing. Mm. Can I mention, incidentally, it's 20 years ago this week since we heard, uh, since we w were first made aware of comical Ali. Oh, yes. The do you remember him? I do remember him, yeah. He was he brilliant. Was fabulous. He, he was Terrific. the Iraqi and the Minister of I'd, I'd watch him at the fringe. Yes. Yeah, I'd watch that at the fringe. He was fabulous. <laughs> I, I can remember when when US troops were, the were actually taking the airport, and you could see them taking the airport. And he was asked about it, and he said, "No, no. they ran away like black rats." <laughs> <laughs> so was there not them. was there not a piece of footage where there was actually tanks advancing behind him, <laughs> and he yeah. was saying, "No, no, no, uh, the Americans are nowhere near the city limits. They're not even not even <laughs> close." <laughs> Yes, <laughs> fabulous, fabulous man. Yeah. Uh, we need more time for people who uh, genuinely give us a sense of enjoyment like yes. that. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, because they're, they're not... I mean, I've, I started the show today by trying to be sort of upbeat and, you know, there's plenty of things to laugh at. There's plenty of things which are ridiculous enough uh, that we can find fun in. And we, should, we yeah. shouldn't forget that we are, as British people, quite resilient when it comes to, you know, the, the whys and wherefores and the slings and arrows and everything else. And, yes, things are going a bit wrong all over the place, but after a while you just have to laugh about it. You do, you do. And if they didn't go wrong like that, we'd have nothing to write about or moan about. Right. I mean, it's now like, for example, the, the situation is now reached sort of peak um, migrant comedy now. So whenever anybody gets up in the House of Commons to promise to stop the boat, yeah. people should just fall about laughing because they're yes. clearly not able to do anything of the sort. No, well, they're not able to do anything, mind, because the lefties stop them. Yeah. Uh, and every time a migrant boat sinks in the channel, the blood is on the hands of those lawyers, those charities and those MPs who insist that there should be no deterrent to people coming over the channel, you know. Yeah, I know. Well, it's, it's, to see yesterday they were bringing people over in wheelchairs. That's how, that's how kind of, you know, sophisticated yeah. the system now is. You can literally, you can literally just book your passage and it's a bit like TUI. Um, you know, <laughs> just, turn, you know just turn up at, uh, just north of Dunkirk and we'll see you on the 340 uh, to Dover. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and it's all Kurds and Albanians. And, and don't worry, if you miss that one, there'll be another one along soon. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Brilliant. But they do sink, and people die, and they lose it's their awful. lives. It's awful. And they lose their lives because of this of this, uh, this business with the left, which never looks at outcomes. They cannot see that the outcome of not deterring people from crossing the channel will be more people crossing the channel and therefore more people losing their lives. Yeah. You know, they, they cannot see that. 